welcome back to my channel and welcome back. Hopefully you've been uh, following the last three parts of this newest Spells and Specialist episode with Max Farmer, who is a vet. And we've been learning all about general veterinary medicine and nutrition and dentistry in particular. And um, we've been geeking out over magic systems based off of veterinary science. It is super cool. You have to watch the previous three episodes because we're not going to recap too much here. Um, but this part four, or that last three parts of this episode, this part four is all about brainstorming the story. But before we jump into that, of course, welcome as always to my co-host, co Clark. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited to get into this. I really, really like all the stuff that was starting to come up as we dug into the blueprint and refined the seed crystal more. This, this, this might is... have been the episode where we were the worst at not jumping to part four. <laughs> we really struggled. I think this we is struggled. definitely the we most struggled. This is definitely the most adorable magic system that we have made so far. It's pretty cute. And I love it's pretty it. Cute. Yeah. And Max Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Yeah, it's been so me. much fun. Do you want to quickly introduce yourselves for the people who are yeah. just joining us? Uh, I'm Max Farmer. I'm a veterinarian over in Hudson, Wisconsin, over here in the U.S. Um, at, at night, I am a writer. Maxwell Farmer is my moniker. Um, and I have written a couple different lit RPG series. Uh, one of them actually has a veterinarian main character. It's a complete trilogy you can check out, even if you like it, that you can get some merch as well. This is one of my e good grief uh, shirts from my newest series um that's out there and yes feel free to follow me on facebook discord um uh, patreon all those good things yeah absolutely and, i can't uh, see that shirt without hearing the sound bite from the audiobook in oh, my yeah. head i'm just good grief lad yes <laughs> Good time. Well, if that's not <laughs> an advertisement for the audiobook, I don't know what is. Um, but today we are brainstorming a different book and we are taking everything, all the cool stuff that we learned in part one, all of the messages that we wanted to communicate, um, which would be good if I had them real handy, um, which were, because we should keep this in mind when we are brainstorming this story, Animals may be part of your family, but they are not people and should not be treated as people, especially when it comes to feeding them they have and different um, treating their needs. Um, what is it? Veterinary medicine is a people job. It is not necessarily for pe people who don't like people. It's it's um, mostly dealing with people as well as as well as dealing with animals. Remind me of the third one. Nutrition uh, is important, is what yeah. I have written yeah. down. Yeah, you yeah. kind of put two of them together with that first one. I, I put two yeah. of them together. There you go. So those are the things that we want to communicate because there's a lot of misinformation out there and we want to, to correct the misinformation. Yeah. And our seed crystal was, and our magic system was based on the fact that people can make a bond with a creature magical or not and take on some of the traits strengths but also weaknesses of those animals and you have to keep them healthy to be able to maintain that bond and go back to the previous to parts two and three to get even more um detail on that we're not going to recap too much of it here okay so the way we do this the way we do part four because we are known for going off the rails a little bit, time-wise, um, for part four, because we it gets get too exciting. Exci yeah, it we're is just a good, excitable it's a good as problem. all. It's... <laughs> yeah, it's a good problem to have. So I impose a time limit, <laughs> because that's the only way that I found to reel myself in. So we let learned. me share <laughs> my screen. So we are going to do a bit of a brainstorming session for conflict what we think the conflict of the story is going to be, and for character, who we think the story is going to revolve around. Because you can't have a story without conflict and character, now can you? So are we um, doing both? 
or just starting with no that? we're gonna do one after the other can we actually start with character simply because i think that's where Sure, we can start with character. Since uh, Max is quite character-driven, we can start with character. Uh, okay, get ready. Um, so my first idea for a character was a uh, like a local, I would say, kind of poor villager kid um, that... And, you know, that wants to have a good bond uh, with a creature, you know, and is just, you know, doesn't have a pet, doesn't have any of those kinds of things, doesn't have a family. Um, and so goes to his local mountain village shrine, uh, or kind of like where the legend is, like of this magic creature, you know, you know, recklessly in this kind of way, uh, and finds a very old dragon, actually. Um, and... You know, he thought about fighting it, but he feels bad for it and instead gives the dragon, like, some food or something like this. And this very senior draconic character, um, you know, to, like, see something special, like, oh, he didn't try to fight me, and becomes bonded to this person, I was thinking. And then, like, it is the nuances of taking care of an old uh, creature. Ooh. Uh, oh, very I like that. Thing. I do like that. Um, and so even like, you know, you talk about taking on the weaknesses, like maybe he has extra power, maybe he doesn't have fire breath, but he has like ash breath, or he doesn't have, and he has like magic power, but his stamina is not as good anymore because mm -hmm. he's in conjunction, you know, taking on the weakness. But yes, because mm -hmm. that's taking care of a senior creature is very different than taking and care very. of a And your it's local villager kid suddenly gets to deal with arthritis. <laughs> oh yeah. no yeah. Yeah. but at the same time threes. at the same time that means this kid is going to figure out what does and doesn't help with that that's yeah. gonna yeah so yeah. Okay. And there's probably some things that a senior dragon can do better than any other dragon and yeah, i was thinking true. too the sense is a you know a, a magical kind of creature this one actually could talk comparatively to others you know to maybe like you know, have some fun shenanigans. I, I feel yeah. like that's been a thing in my stories that I always have this kind of like side character, small character that likes to talk and kind of like give advice, whether bad or good. Um, I had in my first story, it was like a, a magical slime manticore that could turn into a dagger. I had my talking skull. I had another one with this foul mouth imp. Uh, yep. So I just, I'm I, just, I'm just going to remind you, we got a minute and a half left on the brainstorming yeah, yeah. section. So, so. Oh, that's, that's just, oh, I was just doing that. I thought it was poor character. I'm so sorry. No, 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 oh. no. So, the whole character. So section, real quick, so. I, crap, I have crap. something that I want to toss out. Um, yeah. I thought it would be interesting to have a character that is very focused on building a menagerie. So they're building their menagerie by focusing on overlapping needs. So rather than focusing on the benefits that the creatures can give, they're focusing on finding ones that have similar weaknesses. So it's actually less complicated to maintain his, their whole menagerie. Okay. So like make sure they're all, they had, they all have the same dietary restrictions and they all have similar like environment needs so it's much easier to take care of all of them at once and he can strengthen all of his bonds quickly instead of getting caught in that trap of like well this one can have this but this one can't mm -hmm. and, and i'm so sorry kind of i thought this was per per section so i'll try to be faster um bonded to a creature with a mutation um mm. i thought that could be a fun thing and then another one in particular uh, i have two more is that like um wants to go down like a different assigned path than what he was and that we talked about with the nation like you know they assign people a different path and then the last one was like um joins like an assassin academy or something mm -hmm. like that that's what i got quick off the top the, of head. Mm -hmm. the other one that i wanted to throw out real quick was somebody who ends up being a consultant for people who are trying to improve their bonds oh so you bring them in kind of kind of yeah. like the dog whisperer, except hopefully with healthy training habits. Um, and yeah, so so they get brought in and be like, strengthen this bond between my animal. It's like, well, we need to start by how you treat your animal. Let's start there. <laughs> yep. Cool. Lovis, I'm gonna what, throw what one out. I'm gonna throw one out. Um in the first section, we talked about a squad of scouts that needs to go tame something. <laughs> So as like a rite of passage and I oh. thought that was a cool idea that I wanted to bring back like yeah. somebody it's like a rite of passage to go and bond with a certain creature um but in order to tame that thing 
you need to know what it eats or you need to mm. know how to take care of it or you a, one scout in particular bonds with like the weak of the pack because he recognizes that it has a deficiency of something and he gives it that something. what if somebody oh. bonded with the bait animal <laughs> yeah <laughs> the runt yeah. if there or, was or ever an some... underdog story we have a rabbit that we're going to use to bait and draw out this predator so somebody can bond with the predator and they're like no i've bonded with this rabbit it is mine now <laughs> <laughs> okay uh... the timer has gone off so we have our characters we have a bunch of characters that we like now i want to brainstorm conflict and we have four minutes to throw out lots of different ideas for the conflict. This can be associated with a particular character if you want, or it can be just general conflicts that uh, you think would be cool in the story. I'm so. probably going to go with the latter, um, just so I can like throw out quantity and then make them quality later. Uh, um, That's perfectly fine. Four minutes, meta go. Tournament, Turn like a combat tournament, for sure. Okay. That was one that we had talked about a lot. Yeah. Um, so that's one. Um, I like. Probably... Um, I I like the idea of somebody bonding with an animal that was supposed that was slated for somebody else. Ooh. Like a servant bonds with an animal that was meant for the Lord's son or something like that. Mm. And all the conflict that's going to come from that. Um. Training to protect the village, a small village from like local raid from raiders or something like that from bandits, and then like you learn that the these supposed bandits actually work for like a big kingdom. They say they're just coming for their ta their due quote, you know, like a mafia. Or like collecting taxes or something. Yeah, collecting. You know, but they need to protect like their village. Taxes. Yeah. We'll call it tribute for now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the idea of like the reverse of each of this. So like uh, a farmer who doesn't want to be a farmer. So like has, an, has a bond with like a type of creature that's not ideal for things, but like goes off on adventure. And then like the reverse as well of a person that wants to have a simple life, but has like a very violent creature. Like I want Ooh. to be a farmer, but I have a Hydra and Hydras need to fight, you know, they're predators and that kind of way. So how am I going to farm in a swamp? Or, you know, I, we talked about that in video three. Um, and so I like both of those things as well. Um, you know, kind of like internal conflict with creatures, you know, maybe the, you know, with the farmer, the, uh, the creature that they're bonded to is a very, Prey animal and frightened creature. So fighting is not always an natural instinct. I don't know what's happening with my screen right now. So a farmer who doesn't want to be a farmer, that's not the correct one, um, has, wants to go off on adventures. And has like a, a mule. Not ideal creature for combat. <laughs> okay. But Somebody else is bonded to a creature it's for great combat, farming. not great for farming. Yes. I would love this if this was like a a pretend like identity thing where they just swap places for twin, a time. Twin, twin brothers and they accidentally get assigned to like the wrong creature. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Lovis? You got something for us? Oh, well... Yeah, the, I, I like the tournament idea. I was quite in into that. Um, I I really like these um, these academies that we talked about. Yeah. Um, and so like all the elites and they all want to go to this academy. They all want to be bonded and um, eventually enter maybe a tournament. We can combine them. Um, and then you have this like street urchin that has this pack of stray dogs or something and mm -hmm. has yeah. but is really good with them has never been trained but is really good with them and so it's like accepted into this school and it's kind of yeah. like an yeah. academia academy fantasy. shenanigans yeah, yeah academy shenanigans that's what we'll call it yeah this is one where i'm kind of like we can we could go with basically any of the standard fantasy plots mm -hmm. and conflicts here and this would be a good it's mesh pretty open to could, tropes and could work really well with any of them 
So when I, we are making our final decision, I don't want us to be like, oh, it has to tie to the magic system. You want your magic system to connect to stuff, but it doesn't have to connect to everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to follow that immediately by saying, like, what if somebody ends up bonding with um, the animal of either a a former hero or like an assassin, somebody somebody who was important, and now people are hunting the animal, and maybe oh. because it it has information sealed in the collar or whatever it you know you can do any number of things but i've ended up with the animal from the assassinated king and it has bonded to me because i nursed it back to health oh and all the shenanigans that are going to come from that right yeah and then you get pulled into all of the politics and have to settle the kingdom mm -hmm. um i think also um a surprise uprising in a city like i thought about like a guy who's bonded to like sewer rats and then like makes this whole like rat army uprising or something like that or like even has like you know the you talked about even like a, a street urchin that was really good with their dogs but like maybe like this really large city but it has like a very big wealth gap population or so like dis you know dissonance and basically there's just like on the super poor side they actually you know like you know what we built up power nobody's even noticed us and we're just gonna like cause this uprising so like there's the main oh character God. in between kind of like oh crap i'm yeah. just trying to live my life here run away i like that okay that is time okay, oh, okay. i just had a interesting Take thought, a breath. But we're out of time oh uh, you have another one i do it's fine we can move on. Put it, type do you want to throw it in there? Yeah, tell us. Oh, tell us. Okay, so so real quick, the idea is that, again, we're building off character stuff, but it was somebody who worked for a traveling salesman of animals. Oh. Don't know what happens, but their mission is to go and and collect their, their is to recollect their friends who have been sold off over the years. Oh, okay. Aww. That's so sweet. Maybe they weren't old enough to bond with them at the time, and now that they are, they want to go back and get them back. Um Oh, yeah, that's, cute. that's sweet. Almost a almost a homeward bound type thing, but like reverse homeward bound. Reverse kind of, homeward yeah. bound. The the book um, would be called Bound Homeward. <laughs> bound <Yeah>. Homeward. <laughs> okay. So wonderful. We have lots of conflicts and we have lots of characters. What I want to do now is um kind of narrow down, narrow down our choices. Because then once we have our characters and our conflicts, then we can talk about their goals and their stakes and what they're going to do. So, Max, which yeah. of these characters that we've listed speaks to you that you would like to include? It doesn't have to only be one. We can combine mm -hmm. some, um, but we don't want all of them. <laughs> That's fair. I, I think for the sheer fact that I was really, like, I went off on a tangent about it, I got to go with the old dragon character. I do like the old dragon. Mm-hmm um so that would be that would be one in particular that i feel like yeah you know what i just i, I really got to go with that in particular uh i mean if i'd say other ones in particular um i like the um uh, it's kind of a character concept too at the same time but I, I like the uh bound homeward uh situation it kind of like you know this maybe he's a kid and then he kind of come you know comes to age and you know like there's this like one that he felt really connected to or something of that nature ah now that i'm thinking about it i like it but i'm just like how long does that take in particular i would say more that i like is um the bonding of like the assassined pet or the hero's pet I would say I like okay, that one. Okay, so this one. Yes, um, just because I think that is uh, more than more than this one. More than that one, I would say. Just yeah, that's hand. really dependent if we wanted to go the cozy direction or not. Yes, we which, can go any direction. Um, yeah, that's I, I'm just I'm not I don't naturally go to cozy. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but, but I would say that, and then um, uh. I would say the other one I would go with that I would kind of lean towards is the wants to go down a different assigned path. Um, the yeah, right, that one there. I think those are those are the ones that I mean they all in a way like I like them all, but just like offhand like initial gut reaction, those are the ones that stick out to me. I mean, this one and this one are very easy to combine, yes. right? I mean, somebody a kid is assigned a path, and instead he goes to find a dragon. Turns yeah. out it's a senior dragon. <laughs> so 
one I'd like to vote for is the whole joining the Assassin's Academy, because what I would actually love what I'm seeing now is if they join the Assassin's Academy and they're going through the training and they get sent on an assassination mission. Not this one. And that's uh, when they bottom. bond with the oh. animal of the person that they killed. <laughs> yeah. So that oh. ends up a whole thing. And it's this. Uh, and maybe the Academy is not animal specific, but this is more like a kill Academy. And he has to be very careful. He's like, OK. I have to make sure that people don't put two and two together, that you are the same animal that our target was bonded with. <laughs> uh, because that would out me as being the assassin. Right. Right. Well, <laughs> not only that, famous? because then the Academy is not going to be happy about that. And there's going to yeah. be people looking for who caused it and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I'm just picturing like. That's fun. I like that. Yeah. I, I like, like that. I I'm going to add it to conflict because it's. I couldn't kill the dog. Here. I couldn't. So I took the dog home with me. <laughs> It's basically like John Wick was assigned to kill the dog and then he couldn't do it. Right. Exactly. No, I like that. Basically, you could kind of take those four and combine them to two different ones. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to point out is any of these where we talk about uh, them bonding with an animal, that doesn't have to be their first animal. So this assassin may already have an animal or two or mm -hmm. a creature or two. And then it's the second or third one that is with that was the targets um mm -hmm. yeah so so yeah, i, I like quite like yeah i quite like the idea of having kind of a few characters like you can almost taking taking one of the um conflicts that's very kind of setting heavy like a tournament or an academy um mm -hmm allows you to bring various characters together right so mm -hmm. you can have you can have the local villager kid who didn't want to go down the, his assigned path and is now bonded with their dragon um mm -hmm. you can have um you can have well wow i'm lost now where was i looking the assassin you can have the assassin, you can have this person who goes to the academy to find the, the or into the tournament to find the creatures that he's trying to save and things. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of, they all kind of find each other yeah. in this tournament. Because in a yeah. tournament, you generally have to build some kind of alliances, right? And mm -hmm. they're all going to be underdogs, maybe not the assassin so much, but they're all going to be underdogs and so maybe they all kind of find each other yeah these are all i don't know these are all good i don't i don't quite know how they're all going to gel into one story but at the very least all of these could have their own stories very easily for sure yeah okay let's for the sake of this for the sake of this episode let's pick two so we can two we can do or even what do you think just one I don't know how we bring the assassin together with the villager kids. So I think we can do that while we're talking about the goals, because the first thing that jumped out to me for the goals is if the kid is trying to, we do a standard um, fantasy vengeance story, mm -hmm. is if people attacked his village and he's trying to figure out who some of them are. And that's where the assassin kind of ties in. Uh huh. Um, so like, Maybe this right. this kid is like the son of the mayor or or the or the meister or whatever, and so then that turns into a whole thing of they're trying to achieve um they're they're trying to find who who attacked their village and potentially killed their father, that classic thing and their father mm -hmm. is the one that the assassin bonded with the animal right. <laughs> well, then the kid would know immediately, right? Yeah, that that assassin was the one. Um, so you kind of so we could do like protagonist antagonist but the antagonist is kind of reluctant antagonist working on the orders of other people yeah what if it was this could be just of making it the antagonist quote more oh, what happened i don't know there you go okay. okay um making the antagonist quote more likable i mean you could do it where it was like a group and you know he Instead of, you know, like they, they killed the king, but then like before they killed the dog, the antagonist kills like the other assassin so he can save the dog. Um, that that was one thing I thought of uh, with that. 
I do. I like the idea. Maybe the other, like the main character, still being kind of like a more urchiny, if that's a term, <laughs> uh, more of an urchin adjacent kid, and maybe like it's still the village that got attacked. It's the village, and maybe he's just like the the king's son. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. King's son secretly hires the hit on the king, uh, and you know plays it off like he didn't know. King's son puts like a proclamation through the village or city, or whatever, that whoever can find the assassins and and you know br bring that those responsible justice will be like hailed as a hero. And the urchin kid is like, oh, this is my chance, and then that's where he goes to the mountain shrine to be like, I you know to help save you know you know keep my family warm at night. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. And so it's actually, and then kind of, then you find the political drama and intrigue along the way comparatively. Um, so I like that idea. I don't know what, what you two think of that. I do like that idea. This would change it up a little bit. What if the old dragon was the King's bonded? Oh yeah. It would be maybe, old. Maybe it could be that the King had, you know, like if we go like a maximum of two bonded and the dragon was like, the king's hidden bonded and then the other one was like his public you know he kind of like this is my pug that walks around and that's my bonded attack dog um or he used to be bonded to it and he broke yeah. the bond maybe they had oh it. yeah yeah i like that we we don't have to go that route at all i'm I'm struggling with this story with the with the larger scope of conflict because I keep getting caught in the animals. So. What do you mean? My my brain keeps getting focused on the individual characters, and my brain isn't wanting to cough up like actual plot goals. Um, so like you, you guys keep going. <laughs> well, I think... so is your brain just throwing out more and more characters? Well, that hey, they can they can go in between, but I'm thinking you know with that the urchin kid then has to travel across the nation, across the land in search of like, maybe he only has like one clue, you know, like a symbol or something like that, or a garment or something like a very rare kind of piece. And like, is going from like, he's training, you know, himself with this dragon chibi and he's going from place to place, trying to learn as he goes. And then also like avoiding capture because like, you know, bandits and stuff are like, Oh, look at this. This is a dragon. Um, that's that's my thought in particular, and then like eventually finds the academy and kind of learns the truth in this kind of way. So, what if the assassin, in terms of goals for the assassin, is like beginning early of the book, like we're going kind of uh, oblivion style, where it starts with the assassination of the king. Mm -hmm. But the uh, what if the assassin is the one who is like something isn't right here. Um, like maybe they didn't know they were being sent to kill the king because he was in hiding or something like that. But the assassin is suspecting some kind of corruption or some kind of coup or something untoward more than just straight up assassination. Something, uh, there's something going on that they're not liking. And so that's mm -hmm. where they start investigating. And they're the ones who under uncover that it's like, oh, this was, this was, uh, this was patricide. Uh, this was the son setting this up. Um, and maybe they're finding it, it's not just not just we were hired to kill this person, but no, people are trying to start a war and cover up what's really happening. And they have to deal with their own conscious of like, look, it's one we're supposed to be. And maybe it's supposed to be like an order of more ethical assassins. Like we are here to deal with the bad people that other people can't. And that's not what happened here. And that's not OK. Yeah. Like and we've been, could, we've been, we're here for a purpose and we have been used for a different purpose. It could be even that over time too, this would kind of maybe take away, I mean, you could still probably put tournaments somewhere in there, but that the assassin and the urchin kid team up later on in the series to take yeah. out now corrupt assassins guild. And then, you know, at the end, they, towards the end, then they go and go back and they participate in a tournament and something like that. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to shoehorn this tournament in here. <laughs> I like the idea, though. A tournament's always so fun to read about, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be... Right, so let's just... could be just... part of their master plan to get to the new king. Like, they need to get close so that they can, like, present evidence to all the people and oh, have him yeah. deposed. Yeah, and the tournament like... is their way to do that, right? Yeah, like the new king's coronation or celebration tournament or something like that. Mm-hmm.
no that's okay good. so <laughs> yeah okay so then then we have a storyline so yeah the king is assassinated mm -hmm. the prince or child <laughs> um ordered it in secret the assassin and then and then proclaimed oh someone's killed my father go find them this is this is all i know about the assassin the assassin is now wanted and doesn't know why because it was he, they were just following orders and so goes on their own investigation to figure out why and something doesn't feel right and trying to find out the assassin's who, the scapegoat yeah, yeah the assassin yeah. is the scapegoat and they don't know and they want to clear their name what if it's the not Urchin actually King, Sorry, what if it's not actually an assassin's guild and that's the problem? Is he got set up Ooh. in a situation where he had to fight and ended up killing the king? Like they were trying to set it up. It's like on if it works, my father dies and I become king. If it doesn't work, it looks like this this nation attacked us and we can go to war oh. and I can find more ways that my father can die. Like he's an emissary or something like that, maybe. Yeah, or even if he was just hired as a bodyguard for people who were dressed as emissaries and then that turned into a whole thing yeah um, i personally kind of like that better because then it's him being like i am being labeled as a king killer <laughs> <laughs> wait i'm i'm sorry i've lost i've lost that i'm i'm lost a little bit in um, that. where what is, if, who is what if the person who killed the king what what if it's not actually an assassin's guild um okay but they were put in a position where they were implicated um kind Ooh, may, maybe i'm Maybe I'm just making it too complicated. I, I was thinking a situation of like they're hired as bodyguards for a fake political play. Mm -hmm. um, and in the process of acting as a bodyguard, he successfully kills the king, not knowing it's the king. Or it could be like a, a, oh. a sparring tournament and then somebody gives him a rigged weapon. Like it's not a, you know, they think like, oh, wooden swords. And then it's like, secretly, it's a real sword. Yeah. And then he just I, like... think I'm <laughs> I think I'm complicating things. We can just stick with the assassin who ends up being like, there's some kind of, <laughs> There's corruption here, and I'm being sold out, and you can't just sell me out. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. Whatever the things. corruption is, and whatever the the um, smoke and daggers is, yeah, the assassin's trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tangent. No, no, that's good. It's good. We're, we've got lots of ideas. So we've got the assassin who's trying to clear their name for whatever reason. Um. We've got the urchin kid who now hears this proclamation, find me this assassin and you will be rewarded and, and everything. And they don't want to go down the path that was assigned to them. So they go to this shrine and bond with, an, with a senior dragon, <laughs> which I think is great. Um, and then... And then tr investigates to try and find out who this assassin is. So the assassin is chasing the true criminal. The urchin kid is chasing the assassin. And eventually they will confront each other and decide to work together to find the true criminal. I love it. Okay, good. What <laughs> I guess the stakes of that are fairly, are fairly clear. clear. Um, you would have a, I guess you would have a, corrupt king if it doesn't work yeah corrupt you got there by killing um warring nations at this point yeah warring nations yeah the the, the prince could have had the dad killed because he wanted to you know go to war or something like that and the dad refused or something uh um, yeah the, because he wants because the the new monarch would be greedy and he wants the riches of another country and yeah. the old king was kind of like we don't need more we have plenty <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh warring nations maybe so for the the stakes for the assassin maybe well so we could have that there is no assassin's guild or we could have that there is one um and I either they want to clear their name or the name of the assassin's guild or something maybe they're being painted clear. as having been bought by this other country yeah, I mean, basically clearing their name for sure, because, you know, you know, even though they were set up, whether they accidentally killed the king, they didn't kill the king, or, you know, yeah. something of that nature, you know, they were kind of set up in some form or fashion. Yeah. So execution yeah. is the stake here. Yeah. Execution is, yeah. Or else, 
execution. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the stakes for the kid would be, I mean, it starts with the stakes being like a boring life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there will be more stakes of people wanting to claim this dragon. Yeah. So, Ooh. so as the kid becomes attached to the dragon, he then also has to protect the dragon. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, I mean, he also has to deal with... Um, health issue like he's got to take care you know because he's he's going to take on the dragon's weaknesses too so health issues yeah. <laughs> i'm just joking like think about it like you can have like asthma asthmatic lungs you know or something like that <laughs> like kind of like that um but you his know. own age yeah. <laughs> and infirmity <laughs> yeah because maybe there are people you know that could like you know like you know maybe illegally you know they take like animal parts and i make them into pills and potions and stuff like that so like, oh mm, yeah yeah okay. good good okay we have some stakes what are they going to do so we have i mean we have general investigation yeah um they're following clues right so mm -hmm. the kid like the prince wants the assassin to be found so they probably yeah come up with some bogus piece of evidence and it's like all i have is this insignia or this like whatever yeah. piece of information no that's yeah it's so just yeah investigation and then um, what is this action column supposed to be the action is what they do to achieve the goal to avoid the stakes mm, okay um obviously growing and bond with their creatures i think you know um uh, that's kind of one of the big things i think just naturally through the book um but i would say yeah i mean a lot of it's just like clue find you know kind of investigation in that kind of way and spy work i guess you know if you wanted to have like the assassin doing kind of spyish stuff and then you have this like local villager kid just kind of like tromping around and being like like where are you and it's like <laughs> making a scene what about spending time with an elderly couple so that he can learn more about what they need uh, yeah oh my god going and hanging out in like a nursing home <laughs> Yeah, and that's his that's his great. undercover position while he investigates. <laughs> you know, you because it would be. Go ahead. You could also have you know, I, I, this is just an idea at least. If the prince knows about the dragon, you know, because it was like if it was a supposedly what the father used to be bonded to, um, and so he, you could also have like the kid being hunted at the same time if you wanted to. So it's like a lot of like circular tail chasing yeah. situation. Um, yeah. So that's why he's hiding in a nursing home or something like that too. I don't know. That would actually... Also, like if he's if he's investigating the king's death, he might need to like get into the castle and the court and stuff. And he doesn't know how to behave, but the dragon does because he was bonded to the king. And so the dragon has to like teach him how to Decorum. behave. Yeah. It would be funny. Yeah. Um no, I, I like that, uh, where it being this thing of this kid is going off and investigating, and eventually people realize he's not just bonded to a dragon, he's bonded to the king's dragon. Yeah. And then, so then the prince is sending people after him, and that can be a funny thing where that then flips the direction the kid is investigating. And yeah. that's how he comes to the conclusion of like, oh, yeah, somebody else actually killed the king, but it was orchestrated by you, which actually makes you responsible. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. you know, essentially, like some like you know, some other mercenaries or assassins come after him throughout the series, and then like he finds like a note, you know, like kind of like Skyrim style, like you find like the written note, like oh, kill him, you know, like a secret that bounty put out. Yeah, like, by the prince. What? I I think there is going to have to be a point where the assassin saves the kid from a dire situation because yeah. that's yeah. going to be that's going to be when the kid is like willing to listen to the assassin. Yeah. Okay. Um, in here somewhere, we do still have to communicate those messages that we yes that yes. we talked about before. So the kid has to take care of a senior dragon. Yes. It's probably it might not 
the dragon might not be his only bonded creature, but he does have to take care of the senior dragon. So we get a lot of the nutrition stuff and yes. um, care that we mm. talked about. Probably also dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably he'll have dentures or something. Um, um, so we'll have we'll we'll be able to do that. Um, and then uh, I mean I think also just like the you know i think a lot of it is just already kind of talking about the human animal bond in that kind of way mm -hmm. um and so uh and you know kind of even reinforcing with like you know maybe the assassin is learning how to maybe the the, the one the assassin bonds to is like a young animal and so it's kind of like learning about like training and those kinds of things like mm -hmm. what does they know like kind of like two opposite ends like we've got like super young creature super old creature and like different you know kind of different specific needs different specific behavior kind of stuff um you know because you could say like the young drag or the old dragon maybe has like some dementia kind of like signs because doggy dementia is a thing uh, is. and uh and then so then you got like you know puppy training for <laughs> for the assassin in that kind of way so like you're dealing with those kinds of things and training and so it's like like whoa you know like those kinds of things and then also the yeah, other nutritional needs um in particular uh to help i think could be good and then they're trying to figure out what what works and what doesn't and then like you know um a little chibi puppy with diarrhea is not fun uh diarrhea is not oh fun no it's far. just your pocket oh <laughs> yeah I, it gives I away do like think... it's hidden position they can smell them or something oh no <laughs> <laughs> i do think that's gonna allow us to talk a lot about how they're they're not people right like yeah. there's and that statement, uh, that statement can be a little misleading because I want to be clear: we're not arguing that animals aren't sentient, um, because there are yeah. people who will say, "Oh, they're not people. You don't need to treat them with respect and kindness." Like that's not what we're saying. What we're no. saying is they don't have the same needs and the same thought processing as people. Yes. So, um, I think there's plenty of room to get into that, especially with. I think there's plenty of room for that, depending on different yeah. characters we see. As they do different stuff, it's like, why are you doing that? It's like, well, snake bonded. Like, it's yeah, it's a snake. What yeah, do you if, want it to do? If you were bonded to a snake, you would understand. It's something I have to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so if we're happy, Max, you have to give the final stamp of approval on this story that it will communicate what you wanted it to communicate. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, talking about how, you know, veterinary medicine is a is a human related job, I think just knowing about kind of that in particular, I think just with the human aspect of this is good. I think also talking about nutrition and yeah, I, the dentistry, I, I chuckled at that about <laughs> dentures, uh, but, but the dentistry aspect was also really, really cool and the nutrition aspect, I think can be really t like exploited and taken advantage of in this mm -hmm. which i think is great um just because not only is there different age but also like different species have different needs like so you could think like what a reptile needs versus what a canine needs and very mm -hmm. different um and so knowing that and so i think that's a big thing and then um i think also just kind of um yeah again you kind of just talking about how they are different in both psychology as well as physiology and kind of talking about like animals aren't people you can't do that and like you know there could be other characters in this that you see like a super spoiled pet you know in there you know like from a rich family and stuff like that um because i never see any of those ever oh uh, never they uh, never come uh, into your office no, never um so um but yeah so i think that a lot of that can be shown through this you know this sounds excellent i'm very excited about this Wonderful. Well, the last step is to try and create a pitch. Just okay. to sum up, we, we're, we're big with summing up in one sentence here. We wanted the seed crystal in one sentence. Now we want the pitch in one sentence, which is basically because of conflict, character must take action in order to goal or else stakes. So okay. in our case, it would probably, we would probably have a sentence per character, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, or we would pick who our actual main or we would pick characters. a main main character yeah which is I, probably the urchin kid 
I think so, just because it's going to show more growth. You know, the assassin's already going to be pretty competent, I think, to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. They could be the foil for the kid. Yeah. Okay. So probably unkindly, I'm just going to call them Urchin Kid. <laughs> Urchin Kid. Um... You go back to the pitch yeah. formulas. Okay. Because of the king's death and the uh, bounty put out by the prince. Yeah, because of the bounty for the king's assassin. This main orphan, yeah. And this, <laughs> yeah, this orphan <laughs> urchin, the this uh, this lowly village kid has to find um has to find a suitable companion so that he can track down the assassin. Sounds good. Or else um well and then we could add in some of the stakes of here of like but when he bonds to the <laughs> to the king to the like when he bonds to one of the I because because the stakes there are like mediocrity, right? But the actual higher yeah. stakes are once we realize that the this kid is now a target. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, can that 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 slide again. That other one. In order to blank or else blank. Okay. I mean, um, his goal is to get out of the path that's chosen for him. Yeah, because like, the original goal is, yeah, he just like, I want to get out of mediocrity and destitution. Um, yeah. And so I guess, you know, originally it's like in order to, you know, claim the bounty and get glory or else be stuck in mediocrity. And then I guess the second would like when when MC faced with that, they realized. So I think it's like, you know, a more simple, not like world shattering goal at first. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that or we could change the first part of the clause because I, I started very early. Like maybe the maybe the because of is actually when the, because this kid bonded with the assassinated king's former companion, he now needs to find he now needs to find the assassin um, in order to protect the companion. In order to protect Probably. the companion and himself. Oh, it's kind of like basically like kind of in a way kind of a, like kind of trading and exchange kind of be like hey this should settle up my my bounty stuff right you know yeah well and because the, the the main problem the kid actually runs into is because of what he bonded with right so because yeah. he bonds with this older dragon mm -hmm. he need he needs to develop his skills and find the king's assassin or become a victim of opportunity and targeted by the corrupted prince I like it. Right? Like that's kind of or um corrupted air, we should say. Gender okay. equality. <laughs> it's to develop his skills and find the king's assassin to avoid what was that? Um to avoid having the dragon taken or being uh or being killed by the corrupted air, by the corrupt air. Yeah, I mean, hey, women can be just as corrupt as men. Oh yeah. Rachel really likes terrible, terrible nonfiction books, and I'm by terrible, I mean like ones that make me upset about the world. And there's one that's all about, um, uh, you know what? Never mind. I'll save that for after the <laughs> after the episode. <laughs> that doesn't need to be on the internet. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you caught yourself. <laughs> It's not that it's like risk, risque or taboo or anything. It's just something that could be politically charged. So we're just going to avoid that for now. We're just going <laughs> to jump over that. Okay. So because the poor village kid bonded with an older dragon who used to belong to the king, he needs to develop his skills and find the king's assassin to avoid having the dragon taken or being killed by the corrupt heir. I like it. That is the story that we have brainstormed to teach everybody about veterinary science. <laughs> I love it. I love this job. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. 
I'm going to stop sharing, bring us all back together. That really wraps up this episode of Spells and Specialists. Thank you so much, Max, for joining us. This has been so much fun. Can you, for one more time, tell everybody where they can find you and your yeah. books? Yes. So they can uh, find me on Facebook, uh, Maxwell Farmer Author. I also have a Discord. Uh, the links and everything should be below and a Patreon and a website. So there's a lot of different ways you can find Um my books are out all on Amazon. Uh, right now I have five out currently and um, I, have, I have one new series in the works and um, another one that I'm kind of working on. And now with this, look at this at some <laughs> who point, knows? I'm Next excited series. about this. Like, I, I, I really want to take this, take off with this. So I do, I it. do it, do it, write it, please, please write I mean, it. I mean, don't worry. And there'll be a Clark and a Lovis somewhere in there as well. Like, well, I think, I think now I have to set it up that Lovis is the corrupt heir, you know, as we've just established <laughs> that women can be just as corrupt. So uh, congrats, Lovis, you are the corrupt heir. Uh, and oh. Uh, so, yep. I'd be good it, in that role. Yeah, yep. I'll make sure. I'll make sure that, that has your accent too. I'll make sure to kind of when I put like little notes. Uh, so yes, that's where you. My can weird find. nowhere accent. Yes, yes. So please uh, check me out, and also just reach out to me. Just you know, uh, I'm happy to chat and uh, just and answer questions at all if anybody ever does about it, my books or veterinary medicine. Even though I will say caveat, I will all, I will tell people to go consult with their own veterinarian. I cannot practice and tell you just stuff just by looking. <laughs> Will not consult about your sick dog. Yes. No. Can provide you information, not direction. Exactly. And of course, you will find lots more content about magic systems and seed crystals and all that good stuff on uh, The Magic Engineer, which is Clark's YouTube channel. Um, so don't forget to go and subscribe over there and binge all of that wonderful content. And uh, Clark, where else can they find you? Those are the main places. You can find me at crrowinson.com and you can find some of my you can find my books on Amazon under CR Rowinson. We've got the Magic System Blueprint, which we worked through. Haha, look at that. <laughs> and I also have an ebook that is a workbook to help you build restrictions and limitations for your magic system. And he's a developmental editor that you can hire. I hired him last week to help me with a story. So I can tell you he's very good. Yeah, um, we have a very right. biased group here because uh, I have also <laughs> no, done work with Max. We are completely <laughs> objective. <laughs> but yes, I do. I do coaching for writing as well. So you can wonderful find out more about that, that on my website and contact me there. Exactly, that's what you should do. Okay, well that wraps us up for part four and actually this whole episode of Spells and Specialists with Max Farmer, and um, yeah. I will see you next week, Ecofictologists.